Hello, and welcome to the Voices United Conference Online. My name is Max Nolan, and I have the distinct pleasure to introduce our next session entitled Music We Want to Sing No Matter What, Repertoire for SAB and SATB Choirs in High School and Beyond. We're lucky enough to have three presenters today, Bill Podolsky of H.B. Woodlawn Secondary in Arlington, Virginia, Margaret Ann Butterfield of Wilmington Friends School in Delaware, and Kathleen Shannon, who's the Delaware R&R Chair for Vocal Jazz. We're so excited to see what musical ideas they have uh, that can help us all get through this unprecedented time in our field. Again, we're so lucky to have them, and we hope you enjoy this presentation. I'm Kathleen Shannon, the Vocal Jazz Chair for the Delaware ACDA, and my portion of our reading session showcases three well-known composers and songs. The arrangers are also well-known. These arrangements encompass significant musical and historical content that the teacher-conductor can draw from to provide a variety of experiences and delivery modes for their students. Hopefully my commentary will help to stimulate some teaching strategies. The first two songs come from the American musical canon now being referred to as the Great American Songbook. There are many resources online about this important music, including the Great American Songbook Foundation. Coinciding with the birth of Broadway and Hollywood musicals, much of this music was composed during the first half of the 20th century. Tim Pan Alley song pluggers like Irving Berlin and George Gershwin pitched their tunes to the likes of Florence Ziegfeld and George White. Many great tunes became more famous than the shows or movies that introduced them. From vaudeville to Hollywood, a broad diversity of performers put their special stardust on this music. In every town, theater and the movies delivered inexpensive entertainment. Publishers were printing sheet music so anyone could learn the latest songs at home. Families would gather around a radio on a Saturday evening to listen to the famous orchestras, bands, and singers. The fledgling recording industry hit their heyday during this exciting time. Composer-arranger Jay Althaus has made some magic with a Gershwin Jazz Trio. This group of three American songbook tunes may be done as a set or individually. I've used these arrangements successfully with choirs of various sizes from middle school on to adult chamber choir, and the singers always enjoy them. We only have time to look at one of these, so I selected the opener, Nice Work If You Can Get It, from the 1937 Hollywood musical Damsel in Distress, starring Fred Astaire. This slide describes some of the musical content available for study in this arrangement, including the concept of swing and conversational diction tips. Performance practice in this genre takes a cue from the instrumental world. In up-tempo swing, quarter notes that occur on the beat are short or mercado with text accent, and this happens frequently in this arrangement. For example, holding hands at midnight, rather than legato, holding hands at midnight, and you can hear that it has just a little extra flair. Another articulation found in uptempo swing is the slight emphasis of the second and fourth eighth notes in a group of four together. The hook of this song is the perfect example. Nice work if you can get it. You can hear vadu vadu dat, and that also contributes to the flair. If a virtual choir is in your plans, this song will stay fresh. Please listen and sing along. Nice work if you can get it. And let me tell you how Holding hands at midnight Neath a starry sky Nice work if you can get it And you can get it if you try Strolling with the one girl Sighing sigh after sigh Nice work if you can get it 
And you can get it if you try Ooh. Just imagine someone Waiting at the cottage door Waiting at the door Where two hearts become one Who could ask for anything more? Loving one who loves you And then taking that vow Nice work if you can get it And you can get it Won't you tell me how Nice work if you can get it And you can get it if you try Nice work if you can get it And you can get it if you try Just imagine someone Waiting at the cottage door Waiting at the door Where two hearts become one Who could ask for anything more? Loving one who loves you And then taking that vow Nice work if you can get it And if you get it Won't you tell The big bands of the 1930s and 40s contributed to the great American songbook, and, of course, Duke Ellington was one of the most famous performer band leaders. His life is a fascinating story, and we're lucky to have audio and some video access to his genius. This favorite started life as an instrumental until Irving Mills, Ellington's manager and part-time lyricist, was caught in its web. The great lyric of this tune is musician speak for describing the characteristics of a good composition. Mac Huff's arrangement has been around for a few years and comes up regularly on the show choir competition circuit. The SSA version is presented here and would be good for a younger or less experienced group. It's homophonic with lots of unison, the harmonies are the same in repeated sections, and the fun lyric contributes to the staying power of this arrangement. In this style of singing, beginning consonants are emphasized and the final consonants are closed or dropped altogether. This is an element of a more conversational approach to diction. Be sure to train singers to produce the Ds of duwa lightly with the tip of the tongue behind the ridge of the top teeth. For example, duwa 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 as opposed to duwa 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 duwa. Let's listen to some of this chart. Swing. Do I 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 do I? It don't mean a thing. All you got to do is sing. Do I 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 do I? It makes no difference if it's sweet or hot. Do I 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 do what good is melody? What good is music if it ain't possessing something sweet? It ain't the melody, it ain't the music, there's something else.
The last selection is a Brazilian bossa nova by the fabulous Antonio Carlos Jobim. The English lyric was penned by the father of vocalese, the great John Hendricks. While not a word-for-word -word translation, the lyric does capture the general mood of the original text. This arrangement is by one of the real vocal jazz icons, Paris Rutherford. His charts are often very challenging, and this one has its moments, but it is still very accessible. This slide gives a quick overview of Brazilian samba and the subcategory of bossa nova. Samba is a nationalistic Brazilian genre of music and dance with roots going back to colonial Brazil. Sambas are generally fast-tempoed with the rhythmic core more important than melody or harmony. Bossa novas, on the other hand, are a little slower and the melody and expression of the lyrics are the most important elements. Jobim was intrigued by complicated jazz harmony. His compositions began to reflect a fusion of these elements and became known as bossa nova. No More Blues is possibly the first bossa nova to be recorded. I have included links to three excellent performances of the original song for additional study. This version is for SAB Choir. It's homophonic with a steady tempo and has an available accompaniment CD, making it a good candidate for a virtual choir experiment. I suggest teaching the main melody by rote on a neutral syllable or with text to provide an aural context for looking at the music, which is syncopation central. Bossa nova syncopation is not punched, but rather performed as legato as possible. That's the cool or laid back part of Jobim's bossa nova style that has its roots in swing jazz, where the beat is manipulated. Planning the staggered breathing by section will enable the choir to express the text seamlessly. Let's take a listen. Where I'm gonna refuse, I'm gonna settle down and there'll be no more blues. Every day while I am far away, my thoughts turn homeward, forever homeward. I travel around the world in search of happiness, but all my happiness I found was in. Thank you very much for joining us today. I will be posting the PowerPoint on the Delaware ACDA Vocal Jazz page in case you wish to review it or check out the links. Hello, Voices United. Thank you so much for joining our reading session, Music We Want to Sing No Matter What, specifically accessible music for mixed-voiced choirs, high school and beyond. I'm Bill Podolsky, Middle and High School Choral Director at H.P. Woodlawn Secondary Program in Arlington, Virginia, and it is my honor to share with you three repertoire selections. As Kathleen, Margaret Ann, and I collaborated on this reading session, we were and remain quite uncertain about what our realities will be as the academic year begins. So we sought to choose music that we think can be successful and effective in virtual, hybrid, or in-person settings. More than that, as we've endured this pandemic, social isolation, and the silence of live music, our desire to sing together has never been greater. We are also renewed in our call to dismantle systemic racism and further the march towards equality. In our role as community leaders and music makers, we are asked to consider our response and how that informs our music selections. All this to say, I think we must be very thoughtful of our repertoire selections, seeking the music that our singers, our nation, needs and wants to sing in this moment. 
With all these thoughts in mind, I would like to share with you these three pieces. How Can I Keep From Singing, arranged by Robert Hugh, The Spaces In Between Us, arranged by Larry Nickel, and Wade in the Water, arranged by Moses Hogan. My life flows on in endless song above earth's lamentations. No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. How can I keep from singing? Robert Lowry's beloved tune and rhetorical question resonates so deeply right now. Though we cannot physically come together to sing, this text and melody can certainly serve as an anthem of optimism for our singers. If nothing else, I plan to share this unison melody with my students, whether they know it or not, hoping to offer them some hope and light through song. This arrangement also quotes Amazing Grace, another familiar and meaningful tune to so many. I am thoughtful of Andrea Bocelli's performance on the empty streets of Milan, or President Obama's singing during the memorial service for the Charleston shooting, indicating how Amazing Grace is so often exactly what we need to sing during trying times. Using this arrangement to invite my students to sing these two melodies as partner songs would be meaningful enough. Beyond the two melodies, the beauty and complexity of this arrangement is found in its harmonization approaches of bell tones, canonic texture, and counterpoint harmony, providing scaffolded levels of difficulty depending on your singer's abilities. Maybe they can only succeed with two of the voice parts, or maybe they can succeed as it is written. Though it is written for three treble parts, I believe any of the voice parts could be transferred to any singer's part, which is how I snuck this into a mixed voice session. As I prepare to teach this piece, I am thinking group success may be even more achievable through a digital domain as the individual lines, though each with their own rhythmic challenges, are easy enough to record as a soloist and then layer them together as a virtual choir. I hope you can see and hear the meaningfulness and opportunity within this arrangement. Let us listen together to a performance by the Crescent City Choral Festival Choir conducted by Cheryl DuPont.
The Spaces In Between Us is a song composed by Jan Garrett and J.D. Martin, who recently posted a video on YouTube while in quarantine, speaking about the context and spirit of the song and offering a performance which I encourage you to check out. This choral arrangement by Larry Nickel debuted at the 2019 National ACDA Conference in Kansas City and performed by the Unity Singers. It was also featured in a recent ACDA Choral Net eBlast. As we approach harmony with our choirs in a virtual world, I think there are some elements that will yield musical success, such as homophonic texture, accompaniment tracks, and steady tempo. This piece certainly has an opportunity for rubato, but I think a digital performance of this would be just as effective with a steady pulse guided by a clear accompaniment track. You will also see that this piece has pretty simple rhythms, an intuitive diatonic harmony that could be learned on solfege, which I think will likewise enable your singers towards success. Above all, I think you will agree that the text of this piece is one that truly speaks to our current time and spirit. Let's take a listen to the Unity Singers and their performance at the ACDA conference.
Like many of you, I'm sure, I go about my day and have random songs that come to mind or even burst aloud. This summer, the spiritual melody Wade in the Water kept coming to mind, and with all that was on my mind, I reflected in new ways on what it means to have faith and press forward, wading through troubled waters. In recent weeks, we have all been reminded of how much work we have to do as a nation and as a people to reject hate, address systemic racism, and march towards the ideals of equality and social justice. As members of the Coral community, we must take a good look at our organization and measure where we too can improve. Do our choirs represent the diversity found within our schools or communities? How do people of color see themselves in our choirs and the music we sing? Does our repertoire represent black composers and perspectives with respect and authenticity? Do we treat spirituals, gospel, multicultural music with profound appreciation for the culture, history, and people they represent? This fall, our choir members will be looking to us and our repertoire for our response and call to action. African American spirituals are an ingrained part of our American choral tradition, and their study and singing can be a meaningful entry point for our singers to reflect on our past and consider our present, as long as we don't trivialize their performance as simply the flashy concert closer. The compositions and arrangements of Moses Hogan are some of the most beloved, but the demands of many, such as range, divisi, rhythmic complexity, are out of reach for what could be achieved during a virtual experience, in my opinion. However, his arrangement of Wade in the Water is one that I think can be a success. The solo part could be learned by any or all of your singers, and that alone would be a meaningful opportunity to reflect and sing. The SATB verses are attainable and strophic, which will make learning efficient and group performance attainable. There are some areas of challenge, such as the opening and closing measures, but this will give us something to work towards when we're unsure of how to fill an 80-minute Zoom rehearsal. For all these reasons, I think Moses Hogan's arrangement of Wade in the Water is a great selection to promote learning, invite conversation, and make music together. Let us now listen to a performance by the Moses Hogan Singers. God's out on the trouble. Yeah. 
the water. This is the third section of Music We Want to Sing No Matter What, accessible music for SAB and SATB choir for high school and beyond. My name is Margaret Ann Butterfield, and I'm the upper school choir director at Wilmington Friends School in Wilmington, Delaware. I'll be presenting three pieces, Looking for the Light by Adam Pod and Matt Pod, Winter Wind by Brandon Williams, and I Sing Because I'm Happy, arranged by Rollo Dilworth. The first piece, Looking for the Light, is one that was my students' favorite all year long. It has a contemporary style, a little more popular in nature, and even though it's subtitled A Song of Winter, the text talks about looking for the light, it's out there somewhere, seeking the light, looking for the light in you, looking for the light in me. It's the kind of language that is very prevalent in our Quaker school, and I think that's one of the reasons that my students were so attracted to the song. The text itself also is ready-made for kids to reflect on what it means for them. It is available in several voicings. I did the SAB voicing with my beginning choir this past year, and it worked quite well, although today I'm going to be sharing the SATB with you. The piece itself is predominantly homophonic. It has some back and forth calling and answering between the sections. Every voice part gets the maiden melodic phrase at some point or another, and they all want it, so it's a great thing. And there also are a few options for solos or small group parts. Near the end, there's a section that has some overlapping patterns, sort of like ostinatos, that are fairly easy to teach. And I would strongly recommend that you use the accompaniment track. The piece is published only with piano, and there are no extra instrumental parts available. The performance track has some of those extra effects that in contemporary music really make it special. mystery snow falls in the dark stillness as I fall asleep waiting for the spark dreams come
also really enjoyed the ending of this piece. Rather than returning to the tonic, the openness of the chord at the end leaves us with anticipation and expectation for the good that is to come. The second piece is Winter Wind by Brandon Williams, professor of music at Rutgers University in New Jersey. It is based on a portion of As You Like It by Shakespeare, so you can have that collaboration with your English department and students' connection to some of their poetry assignments. It is accompanied with some repeating patterns in both the right and left hand of the piano. The meter and rhythm in this piece offer a lot of opportunities for study. It has kind of a triple meter in some points versus a compound duple meter in other points, and sometimes those coexist. There are also patterns of duple and triple in, the same, in different voice parts that interact with one another. The verses themselves are in unison, so those are rhythmically straightforward and melodically straightforward, so those are quite easy to teach. In the refrains, there are many different things happening at the same time. There are a lot of challenges rhythmically, but it's so rewarding when they get it right. Lastly, this is a piece by a black composer, and it is non-idiomatic music. My students absolutely adored this piece and, again, would have sung it every year. This was with my more advanced choir.
There is a note at the bottom of page 5 regarding the pronunciation of wind, or in this case, wind. You will notice that on the recording that you just heard, that the demonstration choir did not follow this suggestion. In correspondence with Dr. Williams earlier this year, however, it is his preference that it should be wind and unkind. As a suggested pairing for Winter Wind, Take O oh, Take Those Lips Away from the Three Madrigals by Emma Lou Deemer might work well. Because the second movement is predominantly homophonic, it would work in a virtual environment. As with Winter Wind, both pieces are accompanied. They are both published in SATB and also two-part and are of moderate difficulty. The last piece I want to touch on today is I Sing Because I'm Happy. When I ask my students which piece of Rollo Dilworth's they like to sing most, this is the one that they always choose. In these particular times, when singing together is not really possible or safe, I find that providing a song such as this gives my students some hope that they will be able to sing together again. But it's also possible that they can do this on their own and join together virtually. Of course, we're all familiar with the background of this piece, but it does give us an opportunity to have conversations with our students about the African-American traditions and experience, as well as the gospel style. Rollo's suggestion for learning this piece is not to start at the very beginning, rather to start with the shout section and teach it by rote, starting with the soprano, then the alto, then the tenor, then the bass, and then putting all four of those parts together. One further thought about this closing shout chorus section from measures 43 to 47. You will see that the score says repeat five times, but please feel free to resist the urge to follow the score exactly as written. You can repeat this section as often as you like if you have a good gospel soloist you would like to feature. You could also do a few repetitions a cappella. Whatever you decide to do, let the Spirit move you and your choir to express your own joy in being able to sing. Thank you so much for being present for these reading sessions.